In this video, we will be covering the basics of how to export a movie or any file type from uh, a After Effects project. So I'm going to be using the same project that I've been working on on the previous videos. And that is the one where the uh, air balloon sort of comes around and it goes pushes to the background and then it goes behind the mountains and it goes outside of the left hand side of the screen. So now with that animated, what I want to do now is I want to export this as a movie clip that I can either upload to YouTube or save somewhere or send to, uh, let's assume that this was a piece of a project for a, um, for a children's book, then I could just go ahead and export it and send it as a file for them to, to add to their um, to the final project. So that said, uh, what I want to do is I want to the first thing I want to do is I want to there's two routes through which you can export files from After Effects. One is to actually render something directly from the composition window. So with the composition that you want to render open, you could just simply go to composition and then you could do a render from here, add to render queue. Now, when I, when I do that, if I do a render queue, what it does is it opens a window within After Effects that allows me to select settings as to how do I want to export this file. Now, this is the standard way of doing an export in After Effects. And you would have to answer questions as to each one of these different settings that you have. Things such as what are the rendering settings that I want to render. So if I don't know what I have set up in my composition, I would have to click on that best settings button. And then I have options in here to choose how do I want to render. If this is my final render, this is where I would select my quality to be the best. This is basically where you would bring all the stuff that you have here as quality for rendering to the maximum possibility to full. So instead of having back go having to go back to the every composition and selecting full within the render queue, you could simply choose best settings. Best settings will choose full resolution for you, and it will uh, then uh, go through the process of all the. It will look at all the steps that you had, all of the properties that you had set up within your composition window when you were creating it, and as you can see, they might match those that we were looking at. Uh, when we were creating the compositions. Now, there are some others that talk about time sampling, and we're going to be talking about these in detail, but these have to do with switches, things that you can do in the layers. So in next week's class, we'll, we're going to be talking about those switches, and uh, then all of this will make sense for you. The one thing that is important to note here is how much do you want to render out of that composition that you just queued. It tells you you can either render the entire composition, which is the length of the comp, or the work area only. Remember, your work area is this gray bar up here that has two handles on the left and right. That gray bar indicates the work area, the area that is of interest to you at that moment within the composition. If the entire composition is your work area, then move that all the way to the end. If it isn't, keep it where you had it before or the area that you have selected. So that means you don't have to render the entire composition. You can simply render a section of the composition if that's what you want, as long as it's under that work area. And on the queue, under best settings, or under any settings that you choose for the rendering settings, you can choose whether you want the length, comp, the length of the comp or the work area only. So for now, I'm going to keep it work area only. Now, this, is, uh, this basically is the best way to do the rendering. Uh, is the most direct, but the problem is that, oh, by the way, before I continue, let me go ahead and talk about output modules. So you choose what you want to output. This is where you have, where you give the thing, uh, the movie clip or whatever you're exporting, the format. Basically, it's what file type are you exporting. In this case, you choose from any option that, that you are targeting in here. So if you're targeting an ABI movie, which is a uh, video for Windows, then that, that would be the choice. If you're choosing something that goes uh, for universal, like a Mac or anything else, you would choose QuickTime, and then you would change your codec to H.264. So if I, for example, re required you to export QuickTime with H.264 codec applied to it, then you would come in here, QuickTime, choose QuickTime, and then for your video output, you would choose format options. That's where you find your codecs. And this is the listing of codecs that you have available to you under um, QuickTime. Now, um, you, might not see, um, you might not want to export specific file format. So for example, uh, you might want to export QuickTime at the highest quality possible. Then you would choose from here, no compression whatsoever or animation at best. And animation gives you the best possible codec that you can have out of uh, in co codec, remember, it means compression, decompression. That is the process by which we compress video and then decompress it on playback. 
So you can choose any of those formats that's available to you. On the, and each one of these, uh, the, these formats here gives you a different set of codecs. So you can choose depending on the, on the file format that you're exporting, a codec that fits your requirements. So if I were to choose that, let's say, and then I would go in here and look for none, that would give me the highest quality possible uh, from the file. Uh, basically what I'm looking at on the screen is exactly what will be exported, no compression, which by default will give you the largest file possible. Okay, if you need to H.264 listed in here, basically any time that you add a new codec from any video that you watch online, a new codec will be installed in your system that you can then, you will actually see the availability of it here to export. So that's one way to, to select. So you basically, first thing you do when you go into the output module is select the format, then the codec, and then you can start playing around with the quality of, with the settings that you're trying to export. So for example, if I were to choose a file format, let's say like DV and TSC 25, or um, let's see, um, GoPro, this will automatically give you the ability to choose the quality settings. So the higher the quality, the larger the file, the better quality of the video, but the larger the file. The lower the quality, the lower the quality of the output, but the smaller the file. So you play around until you find something that is a happy medium for your target. So that's how you access that. You can also reduce the amount of colors that you're exporting, or you can also tell it not to ex export any, any uh, alpha channel, if that's what you want. You want to say no alpha channel, or you choose alpha matter or, or no alpha matter, depending on what... Oh, and we're going to be talking about mats and alpha matting and the actual... Um, transparency settings that come with alpha channels in, in the next class. You can also resize the final output and you can decide whether you want what kind of audio you want, whether you want stereo or mono. So, and the stereo, uh, I'm sorry, the audio also has access to uh, codecs. So you can actually choose based on the audio settings, what codec you want to apply based, based on whatever settings you have here. Now, my advice to you right now is do not apply any codec to your audio. The way to reduce your audio file size is by switching it from stereo to mono and just keep it at that at best. Do not change, do not add any codecs because most computers do not share the same codecs when it comes to audio. So you might output a file that plays back and sounds really great in your computer, but when you send it to someone, it might not play, it might not, they might not hear the, the, the audio because they don't have the codec in their system. So uh, remember, codec is that compressor decompressor. So you might have it, you might have the ability to compress to reduce the file size, but when they decompress, they might not have access to that codec, and therefore, they're not going to decompress the audio, they're not going to hear anything. So that is the way to set this up. Let me click OK on that for now. And then you can tell it where to go. Over here on the output too, it gives you a window into where do you want to save this file. And you'll notice that it saves it as an MOV because that is the file format that we chose, QuickTime. Okay, so that is how you would set up items in the queue. That's way number one. Way number two is by actually adding the queue. Oh, by the way, when we do this, when we do render queue within the program, the way I just did, Basically, you have to sit there and watch grass grow as you render this file. Basically, you're gonna as you start setting, okay, go ahead and render. Basically, that rendering process takes over uh, After Effects, basically blocking you from doing anything else in the program in the meantime, which basically it stops your workflow. So the way to actually export, and the way I want you, let me go ahead and select this and delete it from here. I don't want to render this. What the way I want you to render. Um, compositions when you're working in, in during class so that you can continue working on After Effects while the thing is rendering in the background is by adding them to the encoder. And the encoder is a separate piece of software that comes with the Adobe package called Adobe Media Encoder. So if you don't have it downloaded within your computer, I suggest that you do at this point. Go ahead and download Adobe Media Encoder. You'll find it under uh, the cloud apps. So once you download it, it will connect to all the systems that can use it to, in order to encode media. And that's what we're going to be doing. So to send this composition to the encoder, you have two ways of doing it. You can go composition, add to Adobe Media Encoder queue, or you can go file, export, add to Adobe Media Encoder, encoder queue. It's going to do the exact same thing for both. So when you open that up, a program will open up, which is open in my separate screen so you don't see it. You don't see the screen, but it opens up. And this is a completely separate program, like I said. And then it adds 
that composition to be rendered as a movie clip within the program. As you can see, it has defaults that are based on a file format that you can choose from over here. And as you can see, we have anything from bitmaps to JPEGs to other file formats such as audio, AIFF, or waveform audio. You have basically all of the available um, codecs in your machine will display over here. Oh, all, all the, um, sorry, all the uh, file formats that you can export in your machine will be available here. In our class, we're going to be working with H.264 in order to reduce our files to a good size, to a manageable size. So if I choose H.264, that is the actual file format that will be exported. And you'll see it in our um, assignments, I will request that you export an H.264 file when I'm asking you to export a movie clip. So with that done, what you want to do is you want to go into the match source high bit, high bit rate. Now, by default, this is at about 10 Mbps. As you see it on that little window, it says target 10, M, 10 Mbps. That's a fairly large amount of data that is stored within the file itself. So we want to reduce that 10 Mbps to about 1 to 3 Mbps for our purposes. Now, this is not final file quality by any means. 1 to 3 Mbps is way too low for anything that uh, you're going to send out to a client unless they're working with something that goes online. So if it's going to go on YouTube or something like that or Instagram, then 3 Mbps is more than plenty. Uh, but if you're going to go to broadcast or if it's something that's going to be playing on a display somewhere on a... Uh, um, a local area network or something like that, then you want to go high quality. You want to go, and that's going to produce way larger of a file, but it's going to be full quality. So you want to make sure that that's how you control this. For our purposes in our class, one to three Mbps is more than enough. How do we change that? Well, you click where it says match source here in the program. It opens up a window that is going to be looking at the settings for that movie clip that you created, and it takes a second for it to open. Now you can see a preview here of what will be rendered and you'll notice that it's all default defaulted to work area you can also say entire composition just like we did in the other cube so you can choose or you can choose a custom uh, render if you want to do something different now you see that this two little uh triangles indicate that work area that you were working on over here this from here to here that's what those two triangles are indicating let's go back to Media encoder, and on the right hand side is where we're going to focus on to what we want, what uh, what changes we want to make. For now, and for most of the things that we're going to be doing, uh, we're not going to not going to worry about any of these um, properties. We will talk about them before the end of class. Of course, I'm going to give you uh, an entire class on how to work through this to manipulate the media as you're exporting it. But for the first. And for the beginning uh, projects that we're going to be working on in class, all I need you to do is scroll down to where it says target bitrate. That's where I want you to change, the target bitrate. That's the MBPS that I was talking about a second ago. Now, you'll notice down here that the file as I have it set up, if I output it, it's only going to be 7 megabytes. That is 6 seconds of animation, so that's about 1 megabyte per second. That's fairly decent. Still low quality, but it's, it is fairly decent. But if I want to make that even smaller, I'll bring this down to about 3 Mbps. And you can actually click on the number and enter the value, 3. And then click off somewhere in the gray area, and you'll notice that my file now will be 2 megabytes in size. So that significantly reduces the size of the file, but at the same time, it reduces the quality. If there isn't a lot of motion in the, in the video, if, for example, you're capturing like the video that you're watching right now, if you if you capture something for online, like for classes like that, you can go as low as 0.5 Mbps, and that will still provide you with decent enough quality because there's not a lot happening on the screen. So the more things move on the screen, the more Mbps you want to have. But you'll notice now that my six-second file is now a tenth of what it was a second ago. It's about 600K, which is way smaller than six megabytes or seven megabytes. So this is how you control the, by lowering the quality, you actually re, uh, change the size of the actual file. But my advice for this class is, like I said, anywhere between one and three Mbps would be decent quality for what we're going to be doing during class time. So I'm going to keep mine at three Mbps. And that's all I want to do here. I want to make sure that my audio is on. So I want to click on the audio to make sure that all the settings are on on this. And it, they should be. And then if I click OK on that, it closes the window. And then it tells me, where do you want to save this file? 
Well, by default, when you save your After Effects file, when you go File, Save As, and then you give the file a name, in my case, I call this one Intro to Transformations, then that is going to create a folder in your computer uh, that has something called AMP attached to it. Let's see if I can get to it. Let me open it up really quick and bring that file up so you can see what it is. Uh, classes. This is Classes AE Lecture 2. Let me open that up. You'll see here that it created a file called Intro to Transformations underscore AME. And that is basically where all of your uh, uh, automatic saves for the program. So this program saves automatically every 20 minutes. So that's something to keep in mind. The program will save whatever's on the screen every 20 minutes. And it will save the file in here. Also, when you export through the media encoder, by default, that file is going to be looking at that AME to build the actual file. So when I click to render this here, when I say, okay, it's good to go, then uh, the file will appear in that intro to transformation transformations underscore AME. So how do I then set up? Remember, first, your format H264. That's what we're going to be working on in class. But if you were to work for a client or someone else, then you would ask what file format they need, and then you will find it in here somewhere. If uh, then in here, if you want to change the quality of the file, if you want to reduce the quality because you're doing test rendering, less like what we're doing right now, then you would go under custom and you would set up the settings here. For now, all I need you to do is come back down and change the target bit rate to anywhere between one and three and making sure that the audio settings are on. Then after that, this should point to that folder and it should be automatic for you, but you have to have saved the project first. So with that done, all I need to do is hit on this green play button and you'll notice that it starts rendering down here at the animation. It goes by fairly fast. I have a lot of RAM on my machine, so it goes by fairly fast. And then, but at the same time, I can go back in here and continue working. So if my render was quite slow, it would have taken um, it would have taken a long more a longer time. And don't be surprised if it, if your projects take you know three, four, five hours, sometimes an entire evening to render. That's how long After Effects takes to actually do a final render, and that's because there's a lot of pixel calculation happening. So that's why you don't get play, real-time playback uh, previews uh, in the program itself. It, the program has to build previews for you from scratch. So basically, it's actually creating a render for you in order to preview whatever you want to watch. So um, it, takes a, it takes time. It take, it's a long time. So that, uh, like I said, that basically exports the file. And then if you go into your, your, your AME file, there it is. That's the file that we were looking at. And if I open it up, let me bring it over here. Whoops. See if I can bring it. Let me pause it here and see if I can bring it in here. There it is. So let me play it back. And there is the animation that we created as a movie clip. There it is. And that would be the file that you would upload to your project. So in this week's project, I expect a file to be up to be named by the naming convention that I give you in your assignment and the actual file to be uploaded in this file format. And it should be somewhere around that size because I asked you, I believe the first project is going to be a short project. It's like a five second animation. So I need you to, your file size shouldn't be any larger than what you're looking at over here. So that is the first quick intro to how to export files from After Effects uh, compositions so that you, you can actually render an actual final movie, which you will then submit for your assignments.